Hi, second graders. Welcome back to the Changing Landforms Unit. So we actually skipped lesson 3.4 because a lot of it we were not able to do with the materials we have at home. So we're moving on to lesson 3.5, which is the end of unit assessment. Okay, so we've been investigating how erosion can cause a big change to the cliff without people noticing. So today we're going to write our explanations about erosion. So we're gonna use the, hand, the handbook of land and water to find evidence to support how small changes add up to bigger changes over time. So what I want you guys to do is just jot down some of your ideas in your packet really quickly. It does not need to be in full sentences because we will be creating um, our written responses together, but just write down some of your ideas from last lesson that you remember of how small changes add up to bigger ones over time. Okay, so now we're gonna think back to our mountain model and that it looked similar to that. That's when we had our cotton balls and we were removing them from the plate. So thinking back to our mountain model, what evidence can we use to support that small changes add up to bigger changes over time? So again, I'm gonna let you pause the video and jot down some of your ideas and it does not need to be in full sentences. It can be just a quick thing, um, but just to get you started thinking so that when we start writing our scientific explanation, you guys will have some ideas. Okay, have your ideas changed about how landforms erode since the beginning of the unit and what evidence caused you to think this? So maybe at the beginning we didn't even know what the word erode meant. Maybe we thought that we could see ch changes um, really quickly like in a day. So what I want you to do is again pause your video and then just write down if your ideas have changed at all since the beginning of the unit and if so what evidence do you have to support why? Okay, so now we're gonna be moving on to writing scientific explanations. So what is a scientific explanation? So a scientific explanation, it answers a question. It is based on science ideas that you have already learned. It is shared with somebody and it uses science words or vocabulary from the text that we've read, um, from our slides or from any of our models. So first we're going to write scientific explanations. So let's review the directions and the question. So the directions for our explanation is we're going to write a scientific explanation that answers the question below. How did the recreation center's cliff erode without the, direct the director noticing? So we already wrote the first sentence stem for you guys um, because it's really important in a scientific explanation to be answering and writing in complete sentences. So our first sentence stem that we have there is the cliff eroded without the director noticing because blank. So I want you guys to pause the video on this slide so you can copy down the sentence stem that we have for you at the beginning. And this is just a way for us to get started writing our explanation in a full sentence. Okay, when scientists write explanations to answer questions, they support their answers with ideas they learned while reading and investigating. There are many places to look for ideas to help you complete your explanations. You can look back at the packets that we've completed throughout the chapter. Um, you can think back to our mountain model. You can go back to the video for the handbook of land and water. All of these are places for you to get some ideas um, to write your scientific explanation. So what I'm gonna have you guys do is you guys are going to be completing your explanation. You can refer to the guidelines as needed. You guys can also go back to any of your old packets, um, any of the old videos if you need to, to get some evidence for what to write here. Um, and then after that, we will check back in and discuss our answers and move on to the last piece of this lesson.